Today we are doing our very first Q&A. We've never done one of these before. We're super excited about it. You're probably gonna learn more about us this vlog than you ever have in any other vlog because there's just so much that goes on on Q&As. First we have to get all these crazy kids to bed because it's their bedtime. And then I need to make some coffee because you have to have coffee when you're doing a Q&A. So let's do that. Kids are in bed, we have our coffee, mm. and I have all of your questions right here. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm kinda nervous. By the way, it's midnight right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just need a little something. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We might say things that we don't actually mean. <laughs> things might get a little weird. <laughs> yeah. First question. This is a very uh, common question we've gotten. How did you meet? Rhonda, Christine, Diane, Kelly, Sue. How did we meet? We met at a Bible college in Maui. The way I heard about Savannah is some friends and I that were there like the first week, we went cliff diving and they're like, hey, did you hear about this girl that's jumping off the cliffs? And I'm like, I was like, I gotta meet this girl. And then when I met Savannah. But we weren't quite friends yeah. when we met. We yeah. didn't really like each other. I think we were kind of like, like we didn't get along very well. I, I think a lot of people at the college thought we would be a couple by the end of the semester and we're like, no, but he ended up falling for me, you know? <laughs> I just thought she had some pretty interesting hair. <laughs> he did ask me if I ever brushed it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I'm sure you thought that. All right. Uh, maybe I'll just count Savannah's lies throughout this Q&A. You're originally from California and I'm originally from Arkansas. Yeah. So really weird how we met. <laughs> yeah. Emily is asking, why did you both choose to go to college in Hawaii? I, I went to a Bible college for a year um, locally and they had an extension campus. So I decided, hey, why not go to Hawaii? I had a choice from like, I think it was Australia or Germany and then Hawaii. Yeah. It just happened like that. Oh, we're meant to be! <laughs> Megan, which is Savannah's old roommate, is asking, when Savannah released frogs in your dorm room in Maui, was it at that moment you knew she was the one? <laughs> no, it was not. Dude, that made Mike so angry. It's yeah. like, what are these frogs doing in here? When I knew Savannah was the one, it was yeah, the, day, was it? the day I asked her to be my girlfriend because- Didn't waste time once you knew. <laughs> yeah, I told her, Right when I asked her out, I said, Savannah, I said, yeah. if you say yes to this, I'm yeah. planning on marrying you. Yeah. And then she got like super red, like, yeah. and embarrassed. Well, okay. So basically Behind that's, story, that's when I proposed Mike to you. Mike is my only boyfriend, my first and only. So it was just like kind of weird, everything like him say, you know, my reasons are for marriage. And that's the only reason I would date too is for marriage. So. I mean, that was kind of like my intention, but to just go out and say, we're gonna get married. I'm like, is this a proposal or what? Like, I'm <laughs> freaking out right now. Christina's asking, have you ever been to Canada? Where is the most beautiful place you have ever visited? So me, for sure, definitely Hawaii. I don't know, I'm trying to think about Italy or Hawaii. They're completely different. Yeah. I would have to say Italy. And I have not been to Canada. Have you been to Canada? Nope, no. never, no. not even close. <laughs> Amber is asking, what is the worst thing about living in California? There's a, a, there's a couple things. There's yeah. a couple things. Number one would have to be cost of living. Okay, Traffic's gosh. really bad, but I can work my schedule around traffic. Maybe 98% of the time I don't deal with traffic because I just work around it. There's also the politics of I think California. That would, yeah, that would be the worst one. I politics think. is pretty bad, but yeah. like right. we're able to like homeschool our kids. Yeah. Which and is since, nice. Yeah, since they are homeschooled, we're not technically forced by law to do a lot of things. Yeah, but it's starting to head that way. And yeah. yeah, soon, who knows? I don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah. Okay, Debbie's asking, did you go to school to be a hairstylist or is this another one of your many talents? Judy is asking, I'm curious about all of Savannah's talents. 
She sews, she makes things without a pattern, she's creative with her cooking, she cuts hair. Where does she pick up all these talents? Does she just have one of those creative minds we all wish we had, or did she cultivate it through schooling? Nope. <laughs> 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 That's for sure. I don't know. I feel like my gifts aren't really that crazy, but... Because it comes naturally to her. That's why. She <laughs> grew up building be. houses with her dad. Her mom would make, like, soaps and stuff and go to farmer's markets. Yeah. Like, you guys were she, she so like, hands-on. Vent like, her own stuff, and, like, yeah. companies would, like, ask her for her recipes and stuff. I mean, my dad, he's a pilot. A mechanic, an airplane mechanic, a car mechanic, he builds houses. How many houses did you build growing up? Probably two, but I helped my dad flip houses. So we would buy, he would buy like houses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we would gut it out and then remodel it and then sell it. Amber's asking, would you be willing to share a day in the life? I'm always interested in how other homeschool families accomplish all the basic tasks to run a home and school. I think it's a great idea. It I is think, a good idea. Yeah. Um, it would be a fun video. I don't know how to go about making one. Cooking, cleaning, teaching. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like that'd be kind of boring. <laughs> Dude, you guys. You want to watch Savannah, me do the dishes? <laughs> Savannah is amazing. I, I do not know how she does it. Like, I can just oh, go. Oh, I should show you what oh, yeah. I do during the I day. I could show you the day in the life for me. It's just like sitting on my computer like... <laughs> Oh, that'd be cool to see like a split screen of you <laughs> and me. Yeah. Jan is asking, how was it that you decided to use the shark curriculum and the reasons for homeschooling? I was given like um, several options and book shark happened to be at the top that moms recommended. And I looked through it and I was kind of familiar with how it was set up. So I was like, why not? Reasons for homeschooling. Um, we'd love to be home. With our kids, we like to know what they're learning. Another thing in California, there's just some, a lot of crazy stuff. Yeah. We don't think kids should be learning and we like to have control over that. And we kind of both grew up in it. Yeah, we so both homeschooled too, so it's pretty it's, natural. Yeah, it feels very natural. Lynette has like quite a few questions. What's your new diet to help your anemia? Meats, vegetables. Yeah, protein. Protein, nuts, berries. Yeah, just, just, just like healthier. Just basically the healthy Except sugar. Pot. Yeah, we're trying to stay yeah, away from. Except just now. Yeah. We had a little bit of our coffee. How's Noah doing at night? <laughs> um, He's doing really well. Doing a lot better yeah. at night. Sleeping a lot longer, which I get more sleep. Do we like to travel? Uh, yeah. I like to travel. <laughs> yeah. I do. Yeah. Do you? Sometimes. So <laughs> I grew up traveling a lot. We traveled like and did family vacations a lot and I think my you guys not didn't so much. travel that much. No. It's very stressful for me to go take out five kids. You'll have a screaming baby in the back of the car and it's like, all right, all right, when's the baby jump gonna in stop? The back or jump something. in the back and the kids yeah. have to go to the bathroom. I gotta go to the bathroom, Daddy. <laughs> Once you actually like go out and do it, it's like it's totally worth it. You yeah. Know, it it's is. so it's much fun. fun. And the kids love it. What is San Diego like? To be within like yeah. an hour away yeah. from the desert, the snow, and then right next to the beach. Yeah. So we can go like any direction yeah. and you hit all of these different climates. Yeah. Yeah. The, the mean, weather like, is the best thing about San Diego, I think. Yeah. The humidity is just gone. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot stand humidity. <laughs> the destination of a dream family vacation? Mm, I'm going to say Maui, Hawaii. Hawaii is nice, where it all started, right? Yeah, yeah, to go back and like take the kids and like, it would be really cool. Yeah. Colton, I was wondering how long these videos take to record and edit and upload. It's a lot. Nick also asked it, how long does it take to edit one of these and how do you do it? How do you do it would be like a super long tutorial, but just the amount of time it takes to film, edit, post, all that, uh, it's, it's like a part-time job. I, I don't know how many hours a week I put into it because they're, you know, they're different videos so you can't say they all take 15 hours each to do, but I'm usually editing all day Friday and then posting super early on Saturday mornings. I'm usually up all night every single Friday night. Yeah. So if you guys are ever like awake, <laughs> super late Friday night, you're like, I should just pray for Mike right now yeah. <laughs> and he gets through the night. Yeah. yeah. So. Ooh, Aaron has a good question. Why don't y'all... Where is he from? Georgia, okay. Yeah. Why don't you all put more vlogs out in a week? I really like y'all vlogs and wish y'all posted more than just Saturday. 
Uh, Aaron, I wish I could post more in a week. I think in the future we may, but right now it's just, for me, I wanna keep quality and I don't wanna sacrifice that. So if we did do like two vlogs a week, I, I think we'd be taken away from that. And I just, I'm a very picky person. I think that's one of my greatest weaknesses and it's one of my strengths too. I'd rather have something for you guys that I feel like I can post and feel good about rather than, oh, I gotta get two vlogs out a week. Let's just film something random and I don't have time to edit it. So let's just not edit it and post it out. I don't know, I just, yeah. it's a lot, it's a lot of work. Once a week right now is just really the limit for us. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes I'm like, I don't know how we did one this week because, you know, I have to work, you guys. I, I, I work for a living. <laughs> Eventually, I want to get to two vlogs a week, and really, yes, I just think we need to we need to grow a little bit more. Do you guys want us to post two a week, or would that be too much for you? That's a question I have for you guys, because sometimes it might be a lot. I, I know sometimes, yeah, like you're you get bored of it, or it's no longer something you look forward to yeah. because you're like they're always coming up with yeah, new ones. Yeah, and so I can't I keep know. up with their videos. Right, I know a lot of people might do those, and it works for them, but. I don't know if we're quite ready for that. But it's good to know you guys like them and yeah. want us to do more, yeah. so that's encouraging. Ginny, what is your favorite Christmas tradition? Um, looking for a Christmas tree. Yeah, I would say we that. Like, like started that um, two years ago. Yeah. I mean, the kids love that. Yeah. We're not like huge on Christmas, like. Traditions? Yeah. I don't know. You, like, like you don't notice it, but you like do Like we don't teach our kids that is okay <laughs> i don't want to yeah you can lie to your kids if you want <laughs> <laughs> solely i hope i said your name right who does the most cooking that is a very easy answer that's savannah you guys right. may have been seeing me cook a little bit um in the last few vlogs but that's just because savannah has just been out i am not a cook in yeah. any My, way yeah that's actually the first time i've actually seen mike become cook. like a chef. Yeah, now I know you can actually cook and make food and survive on your own. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now we should take turns cooking now. <laughs> no. A Maiali, oh, I'm sorry, my reading is just, first of all, it's like 12, 20 right now, so. What type of meals does your family typically eat? I'm always looking for new ideas to feed my three kids. Breakfast is like eggs. Yes, we eat eggs every morning. And sometimes pancakes. And then for lunch, chicken nuggets or uh, grilled cheese or burgers. And then dinner, we kind of are on the lighter side. We don't really, it's like, I think we kind of like do more of a snacking, yeah. a smaller meal at night. We kind of like, I don't know, just eat a little bit. Like we have snacks during the day yeah. because the kids, they can't really eat a big meal. And then they kind of like starve to the next meal. So they'll snack throughout the day. Starve? <laughs> I mean, like, if they eat lunch and they have to wait all the way for dinner, they're like starving. That's not starving. <laughs> okay, they're not starving, but they're like, we try to keep it like bananas and um, fruit and stuff. Yeah. Just easy to grab. Carol is asking, how did you decide on names for each child? What is the significance and were they named after anyone? Yeah, Mike. <laughs> so Micah, Michael, and Jeremiah. It's all after you. Noah, completely random. Mm -hmm. We just really like the name. Jaira is very unique. You came up with that name. Jaira comes from out of the Bible, from uh, Jehovah Jaira, which means God right. is my provider. Yeah. Jaira means provider, so that's how we got her name. Sophia's was a name that I have liked for a long time. I've always liked the name Sophia, yeah. so I've been wanting to, I wanted to use that name. Jackie and Patty, what are your hobbies or what do each of you like to do as a hobby? Vlog. <laughs> yeah, I would say vlogging is. Yeah, that's all we do. <laughs> when I'm not doing my work and homeschooling with the kids and stuff, and yeah. when you're not at work doing your thing, yes. we're vlogging. But I think we get a lot out of this hobby. It's not just. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm on a like a rec basketball team, but. I oh yeah, I, he plays basketball like yeah, twice a week. Yeah. I used to sew a lot. 
that used to be something I did. Yeah, make dresses. But then I did that. I had a, like a shop on yeah, Etsy. Yeah, she had an Etsy really shop. S- it was called the More Baby Clothing. More Baby Clothing. <laughs> it was it was awesome. She had like five stars on everything she sold, and it, it was such a good job. It she was didn't. Fun. Yeah, she didn't charge enough. She was. I felt like I charged a lot. No, she didn't charge enough and that's probably why she got five stars because the quality was just way up high and the price was just like way down low it was like it was fun i enjoyed it the girls were little so i made like elaborate dresses for them and i had fun with it and i was like why not sell some while i'm doing this so rebecca is asking what made you decide to do youtube videos for me i think just watching other vloggers kind of just got me thinking like hey I have all this equipment. Yeah. I'm a videographer. Yeah. I can pretty much do all the stuff they're doing. It looks like a lot of fun. This is my passion. That's really just what got me going. Yeah, it was really weird. We kind of just like, we're talking about what we could do with our time more mm-hmm. than just like watching movies or yeah. just doing something like apart from each other. We're like, what can we do as a family? Yeah. Where we're more active, we go out and do more things and we're like, you know, we saw some vlogs and stuff. We're like, that is a good idea. We'll try it. Yeah. We're like, we'll we'll just go for a year. We'll commit to one year. And if it sticks, then it sticks. And we're like, we'll just try it out. Yeah. It forces us to get out and do more. Yeah. And you're the type that like to stay yeah. home and not really go out. I'm very so like it's pulled anti-social. You out of your zone. Yeah. Which is strange because you're on camera and like, that's not your thing. Yeah, this vlog has <laughs> really like helped me. You like to be behind the camera. Yes. That's your thing. Yes. Can you tell that he's not comfortable being on camera? <laughs> Savannah is asking, are you going to get another doggy? Kim is asking, is your dog a rescue? Seems skittish. Dog. Is she an indoor dog? <laughs> Do you plan on getting any more dogs? Okay, first of all, no, we're not planning on getting no. more dogs. No more dogs. The dog we have is a rescue. She started off with my brother. I guess she came from the dog pound and she was in like this farm with ticks and all this stuff over she her. She was in bad condition. She's always been skittish her whole life. And she's been swapped from our family to his brother's family back and forth yeah. and that freaks her out to be moved around. But she's also very protective with our family. Because when we take her out Mm -hmm. to the park, she freaks out if any of us are in different spots of the park because she's watching the kids constantly. And she'll run to one kid if the kid ventures off somewhere else. Yeah, If we split up, she really starts freaking out. She likes to keep us in, you know, where she can see us and keep an eye on us. Even though she's kind of like a skittish and stuff she can also be pretty yeah she's a good dog and it's aggressive just... when it comes down to it christina's asking if we can introduce the audience to our closest friends i feel like we have i feel very comfortable like filming and vlogging like when it's kind of like just us when we get out i don't know it just seems like i don't want to put people on the spot yeah all of our friends and family love being on the vlog and they yeah. really enjoy it. But we kind of feel like when we're with everybody, we kind of want to be with everybody and hang out. And it's kind of like that time to be with them. And I feel like the cameras and stuff takes away from yeah. our enjoying when yeah, family's and if you over guys do, or friends are over. We kind of just like want to be with everybody. And then vlogging is kind of like something we do on the side when, I don't know, on our own time. For me, it's like awkward. It, it can be awkward. Yeah. Just, where it's like, let's put a camera in their face. Yeah. And Unless they call us and say, hey, you guys can come over. And, and if you want to vlog, yeah. that'd be cool with well, us. Well, you have like family that's like, are you going to vlog? Yeah. <laughs> Bring your cameras. Yeah. Where are your cameras? Our Mo is asking, how does your family budget for the month? That's we a great question. probably be doing that. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't know. I just kind of have like a number in the back of my head. I know like all of our expenses and I know how much yeah. you get paid. Oh man, this is a big question. All right, Rebecca and Jenny are asking, will we have more children? That is a big question. (laughs) What? (laughs) Okay, so I've had a lot of people been asking me this question. So my answer is usually ask me again in the next two years. Yeah. (laughs) Because, yeah, I'm... I mean, I say no when I'm pregnant and right after pregnancy, I'm like, no more kids. And then after like two years, I'm like, oh, let's have another baby. (laughs) I think five's a lot. (laughs) Five is a lot of kids. Five's a lot. It's a lot. 
it's just weird. Like, once you have, like, over, like, four kids or three kids, adding another one just feels like, I don't know, like, you already have a lot. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but to, to tell people, like, we're yeah. done, I just... I, I mean, you never know. Yeah. You never know, like, if we're going to have more. But at this moment, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. We're good. Well, I hope that answers uh, the those questions <laughs> i don't even have an answer um rhonda's asking what was your childhood like i grew up in a large christian family i had wonderful loving parents who loved each other and loved all their kids there were 11 kids in the family so there was never a dull moment in our house we always had each other and there was just always love and crazy. fun <laughs> and craziness around the house i definitely had a blessed childhood and i hope uh, our kids have the same yeah I mean, mine's like the exact same. I mean, there were six kids and I thought that was a large family. <laughs> Basically a super happy childhood. Yeah. Like there's nothing I look back and like regret or think wish it never happened or anything. Yeah. I have very fond memories of childhood. I had the best childhood, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Purple Luna is asking, whenever we come to Australia? Um, I oh, don't know. My sister lives in New Zealand, so Hey, if I ever visit New Zealand, just hop right over. There you go. Hop over. <laughs> hop over. Will the girls be continued to be homeschooled when they get to high school? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Sandy is asking what brings each of you joy. Our kids. Yeah. Each Our other. Kids. Yes. Our each friendship. Other. Yeah. Mike is my best friend. Oh. You guys want to know who our friends are? <laughs> we know each other. Yeah. I would also add to that our faith is probably the thing that brings us most yeah. joy. To know that our sins are forgiven and we stand before God righteous. That probably brings me the most peace and joy. Not because of that I'm a good person, but because of who Christ is. So. Yeah. Sue wants to know what makes your marriage successful. I like the same thing. Yeah, I would say number one would definitely be our faith. Yeah. That really holds us together. We have a foundation. The children also bring us closer together. I also think our personalities are complementary. We're so much different from each other. Yeah. And we're like opposite. <laughs> yeah. We'll get into personalities in a second because some questions are coming up about kids and stuff. Tammy is asking, my question is about your journey to God. What was that like? I think we both have a similar story. We were both saved when we were young. So being brought up in Christian homes and stuff, it was as we got older in, I we think matured. we- Yeah, matured. Yeah. I think that's when we um, understood more and mm -hmm. took it on as our own personal belief. Yeah, I think uh, for me- I don't me, know this huge point in our life. Yeah, for me, I grew up in a Christian home, just kind of took everything for granted. And I think once I got to high school, I really realized that I needed to make a decision and depend on Christ for my salvation and not my own works. It's kind of funny because I used to, like if I was like in an airplane or something, I'd be like, oh, I don't want to die. Or like I'd have these dreams where I knew I was going to die. You know, those dreams, you're just like, oh, I'm like so you're dead. you're really afraid you're going to die. Yeah, like I used to be like super afraid to die. I just remembered when I got saved, like that all went away. Like now when I'm in an airplane, I'm like, <laughs> Lord, if, it's if, this, that time. Yeah, if this is my time, Lord, like, it's my time, yeah. you know? Like, yeah. it's all, God knows when my time is to go, so that kind of gives me comfort. I think it's interesting because um, a lot of people who were saved from, like, Christian home or they grew up like that, they always say, you know, I don't have, like, extreme story mm -hmm. to tell yeah. of when that point changed, and I and sometimes they have, like, this regretful, like, I wish I would have had, you know, something horrible in my past yeah. that changed my life and now. But someone said something where it's like to be thankful that you didn't have that past mm. and yeah. that the Lord saved you from having to have that. It doesn't matter what your past was, you know? Yeah. All right, Sorry. Janet. I've had the privilege of seeing your kiddos grow up and have spent some time with them. This is my brother's wife's mom. They are each so precious and well-behaved and respectful. I'd like to know how you are instilling these wonderful qualities in their lives. Savannah is an amazing example for the kids. She's just a very hardworking mother that they just have that role model all day long. And then just disciplining them, staying on top of it because it's easy to get lazy in that area yeah. and just let them. Being persistent yeah. with 
you know, sticking to and then what you say is the law yeah. instead of letting them, I don't know, take over or yeah. you just constantly change your mind. Like, okay, fine. You know, yeah, it's not a big deal. You can have it. Just be quiet. <laughs> Stop screaming. Yeah. But they, oh, they do have their moments. Oh yeah, like, for sure. They're yeah. sassy and, yeah. you know, they have their attitudes and yeah. stuff. I think we have been pretty blessed with our kids. Yeah. And, they're pretty good. Yeah. We don't want you guys to think they're never disobedient no. or unperfect. It's just it's, like it's anybody a, else, I think. It's a struggle every day. And for us as parents, we Human. need to <laughs> Yeah, we need to remind ourselves we were that age too and we were probably worse than our own kids and no. Yeah. <laughs> And we we can't be so prideful in thinking that they need to be. They need to be perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah because we're not. We make mistakes too. Yeah, we yeah. make we make mistakes all the time. So, Stacy's asking, what sort of discipline do y'all have in your household? Oh, she's from Arkansas, so I can do that kind of uh, accent oh, I'm there. From Arkansas. With kids varying in different ages, how do you deal with the different kids? They, they are, are all different. Different. They have yeah. different, uh, they're not only different in age, but they're different in personality yeah. styles as well. And you can't treat them the same expecting the same outcome because they have different ways of handling things. Yeah. And I love the subject of personality because uh, with my dad's company that I work with, um, we do a lot of personality training. Understanding your children's personalities is crucial. We have multiple kids. You already know this. One is a lot different than the other. They may one's actually quiet. Be yeah, one's, one's quiet, like one's loud. Crazy loud. One's uh one's eye contact, the other one doesn't. And yeah. you get those parents that are in the grocery aisle yelling at their kids saying, Give me eye contact when I'm talking to you. And Look it's like me. that kid's probably not comfortable giving eye contact. Yeah. And or are you up in their face? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's not comfortable for them but then you have okay so for instance Micah he loves it when you're in his face yeah. talking to him he likes to get close to you yeah and then Jeremiah he doesn't like you in his face yeah. he, he has his bubble and then same so they're thing, like polar opposite so are Jaira and Sophia so Sophia I can come up and I can be a lot more direct with her yeah tell her she's doing something wrong and give her yeah. straight eye contact time to fix you know yeah shape up yeah. And then Jaira, you have to be a little bit softer yeah. and like, not like let her have what she wants, but you just. She's more sensitive. Than yeah, she's very sensitive. Sophia. Yeah. yeah. It's very important as a parent to understand your kids' personalities. Um, something as small as eye contact or distance. Uh, just for example, with me, I have like a pretty like expressive, dominant kind of personality where I like control. So Sophia, she, I think she has like a lot of analytical. Mm -hmm. So she's very slow when you ask her a question because yeah. she has to process everything. And I will sometimes like not used to it. I'll like ask her a question and I'm just like, you know, yeah. I'm like, come on. What's, Once an answer real quick. I need, I need a response. And then like, I think that she's not being respectful that she's just like, I'm not gonna answer and have a stubborn attitude. But, but she's she, processing what you just said. Yeah. Like I'm talking fast and then she's thinking about what she's gonna say and she needs like what, a countdown of like five seconds. Like, yeah. And then you'll get a good answer from her. And with Jaira, she talks faster than she's she thinking. Thinks, I'm like, Jaira, yeah. slow down, think before you're about to say what yes. you're about to say. Yeah. So she's talks way too fast and says stuff before she thinks about it. And back to back to how our marriage is a success. I think uh, understanding each other's personalities is is such it's an huge. important thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's you huge. understand the person's strengths and weaknesses. And and this is another reason why I'm so like not for going out and doing all these crazy things because I'm just more like a you like introverted and Savannah is more like, let's go out and conquer the world and do all this fun stuff. And I'm just like, uh, I feel safer here. Like, this is what I know. <laughs> not you know? like you feel safe, but comfortable. Yeah. Cause yeah. you don't think anything bad's gonna happen to you, right? You know, you never know. <laughs> In a future vlog, I'd like to get more into the personality stuff because it's just like one of the biggest tools I've ever had in my life. And I think it would be profitable for you guys. I don't know if that's something you guys would be interested in. It doesn't matter if it's your boss you're talking to, if it's your spouse you're talking to, your children, it applies to everything. 
and our job as wanting to be a loving communicator with somebody else, you need to understand their personality style and what makes them comfortable. Because if somebody likes eye contact, you should give them eye contact, even if it's not comfortable for you. But if they don't like eye contact and you like eye contact, that's gonna be a problem because they're gonna feel very uncomfortable around you. Anything from handshakes to distance. Oh, you can't stop. Oh, there's there's just so many things. I love it, you guys. It's so much fun. And you can, you can tell somebody's personality within two minutes. You will save so many different headaches. You'll make your communication so much more um, profitable for you and the other person. Liz is asking, how do you encourage your children to be kind and respectful to one another and to you? And how do you deal with the sibling squabbles? Teaching your children to be respectful. I feel like, you know, well, if, there, if all, there's ever like, a time they're being disrespectful, you correct them on it. I always grew up saying yes, sir, and yes, ma'am. That's what my dad told me to, how to respond to people that were older than me. If they're ever being disrespectful toward each other, we try to get on that right away. Yeah. You know? They, they know okay. when they're doing something wrong. My dad always used to say the one thing he never had to teach us was how to sin. And oh, that's- they've got that down. We've got it down. <laughs> I think just be constantly reminding them to think what's going on and check yeah. their hearts. And when they do have an argument to- Talk about talk it. Talk about it, apologize to each other, make them have that awkward hug. <laughs> <laughs> that's always the fun one. I don't know, just constantly talking to them about to be more selfless, I guess, yeah. and put others before you, um, especially with their elders, yeah. At church, every Sunday I bring Micah and there's probably around five elderly people that love to see Micah. So I, I try to make it a point every time to have Micah say hi to each one of these individuals every Sunday because it just lightens up their day. And I think it's like a good learning lesson for Micah. And they're just, they're so thankful that he, he actually does that, you know? I know, Mike, Micah loves it. They look forward to seeing him every Sunday. We're told to uh, look out for the elderly, and I think that's just one of the ways we can serve our elders and be respectful to our elders, is to acknowledge them, and they really appreciate being seen. We always say it's good to see you, and they say it's nice to be seen. All right, so how do you go about your Bible study and make the Bible interesting to your children? who vary so much in age. I don't think we need to make the Bible interesting to the kids. I think, yeah, just reading it and them hearing it yeah. daily, but also explaining it on their level. Yeah, yeah, like when we you go know. home, when we go home from church, it's it's a 40 minute drive. So we're able to talk to the kids, um, you know, like what'd you learn from church and yeah. do you understand what well, you learned? Well, for instance, like the girls, I mean, we can talk to them and stuff, but the boy, especially yeah. Micah, is not really talking so much, so yeah. it's like, there's not really a communication, it's more like just talking to him about yeah. things. But the girls do have their um, quiet time during the morning, yeah. and they write out their verses and memorize verses and stuff like that. There's actually a photo, I don't know if I have it, but I came downstairs, I think it was Jaira, she was sitting out in the, the kitchen doing her devotions yeah. and writing, writing out her verses. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. And then, you know, like I said, my, my church ride home, I was talking to Jaira about the gospel and how our sins are fully paid for um, and Christ gives us his righteousness. And I was just t telling Jaira how awesome that is. And like, she totally understood it. And she was just like, yeah, I, that, that makes sense. Like, I really appreciate those times with her. Yeah. And it's that. really cool to see that when we go out places, like uh, stay, over the, stay overnight somewhere, um, just getting up in the morning, they'll have their Bibles out mm -hmm. and like, I don't remind them basically, yeah. you know, they bring it with them. <laughs> 2 a.m. Wow. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's 2 o'clock. Oh, no wonder my eyes feel like they're bloodshot. Yeah. We really appreciate you guys interacting with us and this is just another way we can just interact with you. Yeah. <laughs> I think, uh, this might not be the last time we do something like this. The oh. Foley? Yeah, hold on. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this and we appreciate you being here. And don't forget to push that like button for Micah Dude. Right, dude? <laughs> dude, can you tell him to push that like button? Oh, dude.
All right, he's tired. I'll go put him back to bed. Do you love daddy, dude? Oh, good.